Welcome back um, to Lunch with Kayla. Today we have an email and the person writes, how do you deal with individuals that make it about the way you're talking rather than what you're talking about? How do you keep them on topic? Now, I wanted more clarification because like always, it depends on who you're talking to and who you're talking about. So I wrote, when you say the way you are talking what do you mean? They write back, she has children, and she says to her kids, um, can you go wash the dishes? Then the kids say back to her, mommy, why are you screaming at me? The topic is washing the dishes, but they change the topic about me screaming at them. Then we have a discussion about screaming, but they never clean the dishes. <laughs> Okay, now I'm a little different. Like I say, I am not a psychologist. I am not a child psychologist. Um, I'm just a mom. I'm a mom of four. Three I gave birth to. Um, and one I spiritually adopted. So I kind of know my kids. And I know how I trained my kids. Now I train my kids a little differently than most people train their kids. I do a mixture you know me, everything's about balance. I do a mixture of old school and new school. Because a lot of things in the old school way of doing things, like when I was growing up, a, a child needed to stay in a child's place. And you couldn't, you couldn't ask any questions. You couldn't really talk back, talk back. Like, so you, you, you'll have an opinion when I give you an opinion. That's where I grew up. And... In ways, it was good because it taught you structure and hierarchy. But in ways, it's bad because it overstructured you and over-exaggerated the hierarchy. So it was kind of like, when I was growing up, parents was like God. So it's like you didn't defy your parents and you didn't question, you know, you didn't question. They were infallible. And as a as growing up and watching what was going on. No, you're just people just like me. You've just been here longer. So it's like, and it made it, I grew up with like a ear of fear. And I took that into adult life that I have to work on, like removing and working on. So I'm working on, I don't know where that came from. But anyway, getting back to this question, the way I would handle it, my kids, like I say, I do a blended thing of old school and new school I give my kids the opportunity to voice their opinion I do it depends on what it is if I told you to go clean the kitchen go clean the kitchen there's no I don't care what tone you think I have I, that's none of, I, I really don't care you know what you're supposed to do so if I had to tell you because my young my middle son he cleans the kitchen now, if I have to tell you to clean the kitchen, you're already in trouble because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So the tone I'm going to use to remind you to clean the kitchen, especially if it's more than the first time I told you to, to remind you to clean the kitchen, is going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. My voice is going to be elevated because you're playing me for a game. And I have to let you understand this is not Parker Brothers. So you need to go and do what I tell you to do. Now, for this for this um, viewer, it's kind of like you have to set that boundary. You put that you put your boundaries in place. Now the boundary that they see, they see that they can they can question you. Like why are you yelling? Why are you yelling at me? Like my kids would not even fathom to ask me why am I yelling. Nine times out of ten, it's because they know why I'm yelling. So they're not going to, they're not going, they're not going to go there. They're, they're really not. They're not going to go there. So, and I, I don't yell unnecessarily. I'm not a, I'll, I'll raise my voice. I, I'll have a stern voice. I'll have a stern look. Um, but I don't overuse my authority, I guess you say. I don't overuse my yelling because if you're always yelling 
they can't really tell the difference. So they just think that like it is what it is. But for me, because these are boys that she has, <laughs> it's kind of like, and, and I hate to say this to her, but they're kind of manipulating you because they know that you're going to get stuck on the fact that they're questioning why you're yelling. So then they're going to take you completely off topic. It's your job, because she did ask, how do you keep them on topic? It's your job to keep them on topic. It's your job to make your ruling stick. It's your job to create that boundary. You can't expect, especially children, to create a boundary. That's one. You have to create the boundary. You have to say what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. My kids know when I tell you to do something, there's no time for questions. Unless you have questions about what I told you to do when I told you to do it, then okay, fine. But if you have a question like, why did I got to do it? My kids don't ask questions like that because I, I don't know. I, I just don't, in my regime, <laughs> that's not how it operates in my house. Like I said, I have a combination or blend or balance of old school and new school. I give you, I let you have your opinions, you know, but once I put my foot down, that's it. Once I pull rank, I pull rank hard. So it's just like, okay, you don't want to do what you were told to do, you know. But at the same time, I'm also understanding of their wants, their needs. Because they should be able to express their wants, their needs. Not when I give them a direct command. Because what's going to happen is they're going to go into the workplace or they're going to go into a business meeting. And instead of listening to what the person is saying... They're going to talk about their wants and their feelings and all that stuff. And that's fine. Don't get me wrong. That's fine. But there's a time and a place for that. And us as parents, we're kind of shaping them to deal with the world outside. Because the world inside our home is not the same as the world outside. So yes, they can question you and all this stuff. But at the same time, if they don't use discernment on when to question and when not to question or if they're not taught when to challenge and what not to challenge, they're going to challenge at the wrong time and either lose a client if they have their own business or lose a job. So it's kind of like you have to fine tune it where they're not afraid to ask you questions and to, um, to say things to you. But then at the same time, they have an, a, a level of understanding um, where it comes to a respect issue that you don't challenge me when I tell you to do something because right now I'm, I'm above you. I'm your parent. You, I can make you, you can't make me. So my mother will always be superior over me. She created me. She carried me. So I can never say, yeah, I'm above my mother. No, you're not because you can't make her. So, and it's, and it goes on and on and on generation and generation. You understand? So that's kind of, I hope I answered the question. Um, just to reiterate, 